All right, guys, welcome to our team call tonight. So excited to have a special guest, Dara Marolo. Uh, she is so amazing. But let me get into a couple announcements. The summer sale started today. Uh, it's under uh, Team Beach Body and then Shop and then Summer Sales. They're going to go fast. So if you see something you want, like get it right away, or maybe a family member coming up, a birthday, that stuff flies off the shelf. So get it fast. Um, and you can also promote it. There's like tons of cute little images in our team page, Fit Fanatics, that a bunch of people made on the wall. So I just reshared that. Uh, so if you wanted to share that and share with your next challenge coming up, you could do you know, a challenge with whatever program they buy. You could spice it up. Um, Summit Success Club Party. Uh, they change the requirements. So if you're going to Summit, you just need Success Club in May and June, uh, Success Club 5, and then a total of 15 points. And you get to see Billy Idol, which I'm so excited for. Justin's like, you better get Success Club because we got to make that party. Um, and then for the reward for Success Club in June, you earn an exclusive invitation to a webcast hosted by Marcus Buckingham, one of the top business and personal development speakers in the world. So awesome to hit. Uh, as you guys know, the 21 Day Fix and the Extreme, it's on special for 140. We have to leverage that. I mean, I hit success of 10 today, and that's because last month, it was kind of a slow month for everybody, but I pushed like hard as I probably ever pushed in this business in May and even like last year I think we had a couple months like that and it, it was a lot of work but what I realized during the slow months are that you know you work so much harder than you do in a regular month but it actually builds momentum for the following month so I know like Rachel Rowe she actually I think is at success club eight and she had a really rough month last month but because she was so hard she's already at eight today so it just shows you if you guys really leverage the 21 day fix and the extreme and then the kick starts are 180, you can hit success club this week and get it done. You just got to put your challenge out there, share your story, be vulnerable and make it happen. Get it done. Invite people, send out the, those cold invites, get out of your comfort zone and just make it happen. So anyways, let's get into our speaker, uh, Dara Marulo. She is, let's see, what can I say about her? She is funny as heck. She came to our diamond retreat that we had a couple weeks ago, and she just was making everybody laugh. She just has a charismatic personality that you're just naturally drawn to. She's smart. She's witty. She's just sarcastic. She's just super cool. Like, I really admire her in the business, and we've connected uh, these past three years and just been on the same track with goals, and, and we just have the same goals that we're going for and um, just kind of the same pace where we are in our business. So. She is a six-star diamond coach. Uh, she's sponsored eight Lifetime Diamonds. She is a Success Club 5 All-Star Legend. She is 33 months in with Success Club, which is amazing. And she's a 2015 elite coach. I have no doubt she will be an elite coach this year. She is a, a council member with me on the Miami Council, council Market uh, here in Miami. And she is the creator, founder of Glow Fitness. So, Welcome, Dara. Thank you so much for, you know, sharing your amazing tips and tricks and stories. So welcome. Hi, ladies. Thank you so much, Danielle. Um, first of all, I just want to let you know that this is, I don't know if you guys can see this. This is my light that I use. It, my children and my dogs have destroyed it. So I don't have a diva light. So Shut up! Us um, high-tech coaches, this is how high-tech we get here. So it's like right in my face. So I'm just going to like push it over there. Anyways, um, I refuse to get a diva light. So that should just be known from the start. Hey, you got to um, keep it real, right? Yeah. I mean, that's as real as it gets. My broken lamp. <laughs> okay, guys. So Danielle, thank you so much for having me on your call. And thank you guys for taking some time out of your night. Um, it's uh, Monday and we just started back on the grind for the week. And I know that, um, we all have families and we all have lives. So thank you guys for being here. And I know Danielle totally, um, she's amazing. So you guys have a super fearless, awesome leader to look up to. So, um, that's awesome all in itself. I, uh, want to start by just sharing a little bit about who I am because I met some of you at, uh, the diamond retreat. It's a photo shoot. But for those of you who don't know me, um, and even for the girls that did meet me at the Diamond Retreat, I want to just give you a little back history as to myself and this business and what I've um, 
done to kind of get to where I am today. So I don't think any of us start as elite coaches. None of us start with, um, you know, time served is what I call it, um, in the business. But I, like many people just needed a, a way to lose weight, to get healthy, to get fit without having to go to the gym. I had had uh, my son, I think he was about to turn three years old. We were having a pool party and I was mortified. So I saw T25 was coming out and I was watching my coach, who is an old friend from when I lived in Orlando, I was watching her have a transformation. So I naturally, um, I followed her. I think I must have messaged her like, numerous times. I was one of those people that didn't buy a challenge pack that, you know, got her really excited, I'm sure, and just never did anything. And then T25 came out. I was like, 25 minutes, I can do that. I can, I, I was in a place where I needed to change. I was over it. And I knew that I had to bite the bullet and eat clean and exercise because I knew that those things would help. And, How do I hook these up to the... Um, Shakeology, oh, I know. Man. How do I hook your feet up to my thing? Um, I can everybody mute yourself? Hold on a second. I'm going to mute everybody. Okay. Sorry about that. And then if you want to unmute yourself, here you are. Okay, great. So I, I saw Shakeology and I was super intrigued. I was one of those people that wasn't eating breakfast. I was super unhealthy. Like I remember eating rice aroni at like drizzled in ranch dressing. Like that was like my favorite thing. It was horrible. Right. And it was funny because after I stopped making rice already, my husband was like, thank God I hated that crap. And I'm like, Oh, I thought you liked it. Clearly I um, needed to get myself healthy and watching somebody else on Facebook and social media who I knew and watching her transformation made it seem so much simpler to me. So I actually ordered a T25 on eBay because I thought it was cheaper. And then when I went to go get Shakeology, I realized that when you um, buy them both separately from anybody other than a coach, it was a lot more expensive. So I returned my stuff on eBay and I knew absolutely nothing about the coaching opportunity. I had no clue. I don't even know what I was thinking. I thought maybe she was just doing it for her health, I guess. I don't know. But she started talking to me and she started um, giving me questions or asking me questions. And I started asking questions back. I was actually one of her first working coaches. She was kind of a discount coach. And she just took my hand and we ran together. Um, and thank God for that now looking back because... I was a, also, I was a full-time work out of the home nurse. I literally worked out of my car every single day. So not only was I super unhealthy, but I was working like seven days a week and I had this little two-year-old at home. And I think back then, when I look back now, I was still excited about my job. I was, I think I was losing steam, but I loved being a nurse. I loved helping people, but I was at the beginning of the burnout stages. So if anybody's in the healthcare profession, you probably know what that is. I know Danielle is a stylist, so I'm sure stylists suffer the same thing, right? So I was starting to feel burnout, but I didn't even know it at the time. So I ordered T25, I started Shakeology. I immediately, I think even before I got my package, I started sharing about Shakeology and Beachbody like I had been doing it for years. Because when my coach told me that it was a way that I could earn extra money, I was like, show me how, show me where, because I'm, I'm a hustler by nature. So anything I could do um, to help my family, I was all about it. And how awesome I didn't have to go to another job, you know, right? So I dove right in. And in that, um, I think that my first six months in the business, I had a ton of customers. I wasn't really building. I didn't even know what a diamond was, I think, until like three months in. I was just really focused on myself and my own transformation. But looking back now, I think that that's a great place to start for people because when we start, we have to be able to work on ourselves and improve where we're at in order to be able to help inspire change in others and help other people as well, right? So I know some people come on and they're like already super fit. That wasn't me. Um, I shared my journey. I shared all the sweat and the nitty gritty and I inspired people and didn't even realize it. I, I remember thinking to myself, 
who's going to want to pay any attention to me? I was not using social media. I was not using Facebook. I would like maybe post a, a fat girl selfie, I call them, because if you look at my selfies from back then, I was just like a puffer fish. I was so big and I thought I looked good. <laughs> so I posted my selfies every once in a while and that's what I use social media for or to share some pictures of the kit of my one child at the time. And I think I had like 250 friends and I wasn't like, you know, I, I just wasn't that into social media. I remember laughing at people like, Oh, you're on Facebook. How lame is that? You know? So I really took the opportunity of, um, getting into Shakeology and T25 to transform myself. Uh, and yeah, the bonus of being a coach and helping other people was really cool. And I remember when I shared or when somebody would order a challenge pack, I would get like this endorphin rush and it was so exciting. And I realized in that with my nursing that this was pretty cool. And at the time I was watching tons of people that I knew like, that I got to hang out with, like Lindsay Matway when I started. And by the way, you guys, I've been a coach since August of 2013. So um, I think it was like the first year Lindsay Matway went top coach and she's um, my upline, part of the upline that I'm involved in. So I'm from the Biome Shell dynasty. But like, I got to go to dinner with Lindsay Matway one night and that was super surreal because I'm like, if she's doing it, then I can do this too. So I started to get that bug. And I don't know if some of you... Um, who maybe have been on or newer coaches are getting that bug as well. Or you see um, the things that Danielle has been able to do or the things that, you know, Christina Delgado and your other coaches on your awesome team have been able to do. I caught that bug. I saw these women who were just like me. They were having transformations. They had kids, they had other jobs. And I was like, that's it. Like if they can do it, I can do it too. And whenever that happened, I made an all in switch that I was going to stay consistent. I was going to show up. I was going to, I already loved my workouts and loved Shakeology. So that was a no brainer, but like I was going to make this business work for my family. Like that was it. Like I saw the end of the nursing tunnel that I was in because I remember thinking to myself at the time, um, there's never going to be an end to what I'm doing. Like I can go to school until I'm blue in the face and I can have over a hundred thousand dollars in educational debt. Right. And I'd still be away from my family almost every day of the week. I would still be missing out on my kids things at school. And I would still be doing all of the things that I had to do to bring in money, but I didn't want to do. So I was like a robot going to work, right? Like I saw my patients and, and now Beachbody came in and it gave me like a newfound um, passion, if you will. It, I like to say it reinvigorated my fire um, because my light was dulled. I was helping people who didn't want to be helped. I was, um, it, nursing is a thankless job. So like you'll clean somebody up after vomiting all over themselves and they're like, yeah, thanks. You know, they don't even say thank you. So I, um, I found the thanks that I was looking for in Beachbody and I ran with it. So I want to say, I, I wrote some notes before the call, but I, my phone is now locked, but I want to say that for some of you, I know you guys, some of you are maybe new. Some of you have been in the business every step of my coaching journey has been a very natural progression. I think that when I was coming around, I think the six month mark, I started to see other people that started when I started pop to diamond. And I was like, what are they doing? Because I am super Ruby. Like if there could be like a red light around me, as far as like being competitive and a challenge, like it's, my red light would like blind people because I'm super Ruby. And I know it's like Danielle's the opposite. She's more introverted. She's like, I think she blue or yellow. I don't know. I am a Ruby at the core and it kills me because my son who's going to be five is not a Ruby. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? Like I am such a Ruby. It's killer. So I started seeing other coaches go diamond that started when I did. And I was like, wait a second. I, never looked at the drill down. I don't even know what I need to get to diamond. What is the diamond roadmap? I don't know. Give me one. Let me fill it out. And I figured it out. And I think it was like a two week process because I had had so many customers just drinking Shakeology and using the programs that I, 
you know, did what I needed to do to get to Diamond. And I was like, hell yes. And I remember being in my car. You ready for this, guys? Being in my car, it was 7 a.m. ish. I had already dropped my son off with my mother who was going to drive him to school because I was on my way to school. I decided it was smart to go take um, some more classes to get my, to work on my, furthering my education in nursing. And I had this math class I had to be at at like 7.20 in the morning. Ridiculous. I suck at math. Like math is like German to me. So it was like pointless. I was literally in class when I had these classes on my phone making graphics. That's what I did in my math class. So I'm on the way to school. I had just hit diamond. I have Rihanna and Kanye blaring. I'm like crying because I hit diamond. No, I wasn't a millionaire. No, I didn't pay my mortgage off. Like none of that happened. I was just so freaking proud of myself. And I can't remember a time that I had been that proud of myself for just doing something. Like nobody told me I had to do it. It was something I did because I wanted to do it, right? I, and I was on this path of freedom for my family and I was getting there. Like there was nobody stopping me. And I got to school and I looked like a hot mess at 7.20 in the morning from crying because I'm a diamond now that nobody understands that except for us guys, nobody. And once you hit diamond, you'll be like, I know what she's talking about. So I get to school and I'm like, not paying a lick of attention to what she's talking in German on the board with her numbers. And I'm making a graphic and it hit me. What are you doing? And I looked at her and I looked around the room at all of these kids that were like way younger than me. And I'm like, deuces, I'm out. Like I got my stuff, I left and I said, I'll chalk that up to a loss. And I never went back to school because I knew then that the energy that I was putting into this schooling, this math class at the time could have been, it, it needed to be better served for me. So I went all in with my coaching. I said, I'm not going to go back to school right now. If I need to go back to school, it'll always be there. Right. But right now, this is what I'm going to focus on. I worked my butt off as a nurse. I stayed consistent with my, my coaching and with everything that went involved and I went after it. And here I am um, now going on almost three years, August will be three years. And I know that that time when I made that decision back, what was it, December of when I started of this first year, that impacted me to where I am today. So a couple more things happened in that time. I ended up getting pregnant. Um, we planned to have our second child and I got pregnant and I said, hell no, I am not going back to work. So after I got pregnant, I knew I had nine months, right? Eight months after I found out. I had eight months to make some magic happen because my firstborn went back to, I went back to work when he was three weeks old. That was really like, I didn't know any better. Like that was my first kid and I needed to work. So I, I moved my whole self forward. I gave my business my all. I worked full time. So I hate when people tell me, oh, I work full time and I have kids. I work full time. I had a kid. I had a husband who's like a kid. And I made my business be able to bring in what it bring, bring in as a full time um, beach body coach. And let me share something else with you. You guys are really lucky because you're in Danielle's downline and you're part of Diesel Nation and Fit Fanatics. I don't have a strong upline that helps me build at all. So everything I've done is basically just me. I have to balance my weak and my strong. I have to build this myself. So um, never use that as an excuse either if you're on a weird leg or anything like that. So I got pregnant. I gave it my all. I ended up retiring from being a nurse. I, I say I'm a former nurse. Uh, when I think I was eight months pregnant, I left in April right after the success club trip. So I went to Mexico, like ginormously pregnant and came home and didn't go back to work. And I gave my all to coaching. I never stopped. And I really think that the one thing that helped me get there was being consistent. So I, naturally, like I was saying, I, I developed naturally into where I'm at today as a leader for my team. And as a, um, I don't want to call myself a rock star coach cause I don't think I am, but I just naturally developed to where I am. So I naturally evolved into like, okay, I'll work my like page and okay, I'll start doing Snapchat and all right, it's time to go work on this or that. I believe that if you are 
finally, how do I say this? If you are deeply invested in personal development on a daily basis, that natural progression of where you'll get in your business is so much easier. Um, you'll be like, all right, I'm ready for that. Instead of fighting those things that need to happen for you to grow as a person and as a leader. So something somebody said to me a couple of weeks ago got me. She was like, maybe I wasn't ready to be a 10 star coach because I wasn't ready to be a 10 star leader. And I'm like, whoa, that was deep. She was acknowledging that, you know, her business herself or whatever wasn't ready for that. So I want to let you know that if you're not doing PD, game changer, dig into it. We're not telling you to do it because it's, um, the cool thing to do. It just is, it's just awesome. And, um, when you dig into PD, you will find out things about yourself and about your business and get yourself to places you never thought you'd go to because that's what happened to me. Like I'm the person who thinks, Oh, how do I say that? I'm the person that like wants to say the things that are on her mind and sometimes has to hold myself back and always was really worried about what people thought about me. And I started this coaching like, all right guys, I'm just going to share. And I, in personal development, not only did I naturally grow my business, but I also like naturally realized that it doesn't matter what anybody else is think, what anybody else thinks, because it's not my business. And that has helped me get to where I am today. Um, the four agreements, it's an amazing book. If you haven't read it, it's amazing. That was a game changer for me. I, needed to be able to be in a place in my life to provide value to the people who were watching me. I needed to be able to provide content um, and provide uh, inspiration and motivation and whatever it is that people feel for me and vibe off me. I needed to be in a place mentally to do that. I can be a negative Nancy. I can be a hater. I'm, I can be a little raunchy. I can be a little, uh -uh. I, I'm, that's just who I am. Like, and I make no apologies for who I am. Like, even though like, I still, that little voice is still inside me. Like, Shh, Dara, you know, what are they thinking about you? I'm like, who cares? Like at this point, I'm just me. And I know that a lot of people feel the same way. Right. So somebody else said to me, and I, I pick up on little bits and pieces of what people say. I might not hear everything all the time, but I pick up on the important things. And somebody said to me, when you are yourself, people pay more attention, right? How easy is that? So like, who has Snapchat? Does anybody have Snapchat? You guys use Snapchat? All right. Snapchat. It's like the unfiltered version of Facebook for me because that's like on Facebook, like, I have to make sure I'm in like the right position for a selfie. And like, I feel like I'm more critical of myself. Just come on. How many selfies do you guys think? You're like, okay, that was going on before this call. So on Snapchat, I just kind of put things up there and I kind of just share, um, whatever is going on. Right. And people seem to like that. And somebody said to me, where are you getting the people that are following you? And I said, I have no clue. And I asked a couple of the people who are following me that I see watching my snaps and they're like, you're just funny. You're just you. And I'm like, okay, I guess that works. I can just be me. You guys can just be you. So the first thing you have to be aware of is that you are providing value to the people who are following you by just being yourself. Um, the name of that book was uh, The Four Agreements. So you're providing value to people by just being yourself. You may think that you have nothing to share or you have nothing to post about. Just take a step in, a second, step back and assess your situation, right? Like I'm like, there are so many things that go on in my day that I could share. Like for instance, today I had to go to Costco twice. Why? Because I forgot chicken skewers. And if anybody follows me on Facebook and knows about chicken skewers in my house, it's like the number one lunch. My husband like demands it every day. And I am happy to make his lunch so he doesn't spend $20 a day on crap food, whatever. So I had to go back to, to um, Costco. I hate Costco. Like to go there once in one week was a, you know enough for me. So I shared that on Snapchat, but like, I can't share everything on Facebook, right? Like people will look at you like you're crazy. How many times did Dara post on Facebook today? So Snapchat has been that like funny place for me, um, to provide more value. But 
if you step back and think about your day and what goes on and what you encounter, use those things to provide value to people. Like a small win, like everybody was sharing about donuts the other day. And I'm like, do not do, donut do that. Like I use some donut do that. Like I was like, don't eat the donut. Like why do you have to eat a donut? It's just national donut day. Who cares? Like there's a day for everything, whatever. So I hear a lot of people that are dry. Sometimes I hear a lot of people saying that like my life is boring. I'm lame. I have this or that. Like I listened to Bonnie Engel, like, what is she, number five in the company when she came to Super Saturday for us? She was like, you guys, I'm lame. I don't do anything. I'm at home with my husband. Um, People like that, right? Um, People like to see your everyday normal, your everyday routine because it's not theirs. Does that make sense? So what's normal to Stephanie? What's normal to, to Mari? What's normal to Rachel? What's normal to Farron? Like, that's not normal to everybody else. So it's fun to watch people share their differences and what their normal is. So um, never say you don't have anything to post about because you have so much more to post about and to share about than you could ever imagine. Just kind of uh, take a step back and look at your, your life, your situation, your workouts, your shaking, your shake, shaking, your shakeology. Look at it like you're somebody else. You know what I mean? And be like, hey. That's funny. And when you stop caring so much about um, what you put out there and you stop second guessing yourself and you stop thinking that nobody's going to pay attention to me, that's when everybody's going to. Like, that's just it. Um, I, let me just pull up my notes real quick. I have to unlock my phone. I also want to share with you guys that how many of you guys, I know that. Danielle told me that a lot of you guys have come into coaching in Danielle's world from free groups. Um, free groups are right. You guys, a lot of you have come through. Danielle is awesome at running free groups. I run free groups. I, I, I don't bring a lot of coaches on from them. So I think that that's awesome that Danielle does that. I personally run free groups for my team throughout the month and we all work together. But the biggest thing, and you guys write this one down, because this is a winner. The biggest thing for me with my recruiting and bringing on working coaches to my team is not only me being myself and being honest with them who I am, because I don't, like, there's no smoke and mirrors here. Like, I cuss. I'm, like, I'm just me. Like, I can't even say it. I'm not, (laughs) I'm I'm just me. Like, my kids drive me nuts sometimes. I'm not the mom that's sitting on the floor playing with Play-Doh. That's not me. Play-Doh makes a mess. Like there's no Legos in my house because the baby will choke on Legos. So the older kid is whatever like that. I'm just not, I'm just me. And my coaches know that I'm just me. So one of the biggest things in my business that's helped me grow is building relationships. A, because I'm myself and I'm everybody's friend, right? Like I can talk to somebody in the grocery store I've never met before. And I I could probably tell her my life story and I'd be like, what's up girl? You don't vibe with me. You know, we're not friends. Oh, that's right. We're at the grocery store. So like, that's me. I felt the need to tell the lady at Costco today that I had already been there twice. And she kind of looked at me like, and I care because and I was like, yeah, you know, but building relationships with people, you guys, if people know you care, if people know you're genuine, if people know you're being you, they're going to follow you and they're going to want to follow in your footsteps. Because if you're that bright, shining light and they're maybe in a place in their life like I was when I started that, you know, I need to change. I need to be inspired. I need something. And I didn't even know I needed it. Some of it. You have to be that person to them, right? You guys, like you have to be that person. And to be that person, got to be yourself and you got to build the relationship. So for me, um, when everybody says invite, 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 I'm not really sending out messages like, hey guys, it's Dara. I'm a beach body coach and I really want you to join my next challenge because it's going to be awesome and we're going to lose a lot of weight. That's not me. I don't know about you guys, but if you're doing that and it works for you, awesome. For me, it doesn't work. I'm like, hey girl, what's going on? Those kids are so cute. That dress you were wearing the other day looks so amazing. Are you losing weight? You look so good. Those shoes, where'd you get those shoes? Like, I just like, I see somebody's picture, I see somebody, um, and I think that they would be awesome at something, coaching or challenge or whatever, or they've engaged with me in some way, 
and I compliment and I build the relationship. And by no means out the gate am I inviting them to anything, a free group, a, a, a challenge, a coach op call, none of that. But after I've built that relationship and after I've been like, yo girl, those shoes, amazing, or what are you doing? Where did you go? Whatever it is that we're talking about, hey, I have a coaching opportunity call coming up and I think you would be amazing at this. Do you think you want to check it out? Boom, done. Like after I've built that relationship and that's what's worked for me. There's no like science or method behind it. Um, I'm just a relationship builder. And I think that that comes from me being a people person. And I know that not everybody is a people person, but guess what? This awesome thing called Facebook and Instagram, whichever you, I hate Instagram, but you know, I hate Instagram, um, Snapchat, Facebook, social media, whatever it is that you use is like, it's a way and a platform for you to communicate with these people without having to worry so much. How many of you guys can walk up to somebody in the store and be like, Hey, how are you? I have a challenge going on. And you don't know this person. You don't have no idea. You've never met this person. Would you like to come join my online health and fitness challenge? I really think you'd be awesome at it. You look like you could lose some weight. Nobody does that, right? Like, but I was in Walmart once and I saw a girl who was really into what she was putting in her cart. She was paying attention to her list. And I had just started coaching. I think she was one of my first customers. And I was like, pony up, Dara, go talk to her. Because I just like, I just needed to talk to her. And I was like, oh, turkey bacon. That's healthy. Yeah, I'm trying to lose weight too. I just had a baby. She obviously had a baby with her. Guess what? That was like almost three years ago. She is coming on board as like, she's already creating a team and she hasn't even signed up yet. And this is because I took the time to go talk to her then. She signed up as a challenger back then. She's going through a horrible, horrible divorce. Now she's coming back on board. But imagine if I wouldn't have had the courage to just kind of be creative in what I said to her. So it's okay, you guys, to go up to people and say things like, hey, I don't know. You have to like use the situation accordingly, but turkey bacon for me was the, the all in on that situation. So it's okay to um, have that face to face, but if you're not okay with that, remember that social media is a great place to hide, if you will. Um, hide behind your computer and know that you're not getting rejected face to face. So it's a lot easier to break up with somebody via a text message than it is to even call them on the phone or look in their face and tell them that you don't want to date them anymore, right? It's a lot easier to have somebody tell you, no, sorry, I don't want to join your challenge via a message versus face-to-face. -face. So I don't know. There's just, um, there's something that is mysterious and elusive. Is that the right way to say it? About um, social media. And you guys have to use it to your advantage. Don't be afraid of hearing no. Don't be afraid of being yourself. And don't be afraid of what anybody else is thinking about you because you know, as sure as um, you know you love your kids, your husband, you love who you are as a person, you know that you are only trying to help people better and change their lives. So you're providing value because you're that bright shining light in this crappy dark world we live in, right? Like, let's face it, how many people go through their newsfeed and see things like, you know, I hate my life, I hate my job, ugh, ugh. like it happens all the time. So you're that bright light. And even if people aren't commenting or like liking or whatever on your stuff, they're watching you. Like they are watching you. So on that note of providing value, I think with building the relationship and being yourself, all those things I talked about, that, that's key, right? Like you have to build relationships. You have to be yourself. That's key. Even I know it doesn't matter if you're doing the free groups, whatever it is, it's key. Um, now we talked about, I said something about stepping into the community. So for me, another way that I have been able to create value and expand my network as a coach is, um, <laughs> ripping the bandaid off. Right. Because I'm not a face-to-face -face person as much as I am a people person. Like it's not easy for me to go and talk about the business or talk about beach body or shakeology. Why? because I didn't want to be that icky sticky person doing that, right? Like how many of you guys know somebody at your kid's school that sells vitamins or like 
makeup or something. And she's like shoving it down your throat all the time. That was the girl that I didn't want to be, right? So I'm the PTA president at my school. I don't even know how that happens, but I'm the PTA president at our temple, at our school. And like, I don't make any apologies for who I am. And I don't try to hide and say I'm not a beach body coach. Like, no, I'm a work at home mom. Yeah, I get to run the PTA. Yeah, I'm in my workout clothes all the time. And you know you want to follow me on Facebook. And they do. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> like, because I'm so present at my son's school and these other moms, like, I don't even know who half of them are, but they friended me or they found me on Facebook or in conversations with each other. I'm like, hey, do you have Facebook? That's the easiest thing in the world to say, right? Hey, do you have Facebook? If you can get into the habit when you meet people face to face to just say, hey, do you have Facebook? And whoop out your phone because you know it's in your hand anyways. Friend them on Facebook or find them. Oh, here I am. Give me your phone real quick. You'll get really good at it. Trust me. And you like friend them or they friend you right there that second. You don't have to say a word about beach body, about coaching, about challenge packs, about anything. You don't have to say a word because I guarantee you, I guarantee you, they're going to come to you and say, what is this stuff that you're sharing and posting about? Oh, tell me more. Oh my goodness. You look so good. Like, and I, I say it like a Jappy Jewish person because that's what I am and that's what all I know. But like, they come after me, you guys. And you know what kills me is when I get out of the car every single morning and the same mom is looking at me and she's like, oh, you look so good. And I look back at her and I'm like, you know, you want to join me because she's watching me on Facebook. She knows what I'm doing. So like friending those people, getting them on your social media, you never have to look at them and say, hey, I have an online health and fitness challenge. Are you interested? Because you're posting on social media and what you do every day consistently as a coach and what you put out there says it for you. Like, I don't, I don't know how else to nutshell that one up because um, I've never had a shake and share. I've never, I've never done that. Um, I'm not one to do vendor events. I'm not one to... Um, you know, walk around with my business card and give it to people. If people do that, that's awesome. It's just not me. So for me, I just use Facebook to the best of my advantage. And that is literally like anybody I come in contact with that I think could benefit from what I have, which is pretty much everybody. Hey, you have Facebook? Hey, you have Facebook? You could, you'll always hear me say that to people. And I promise you, they'll always ask questions, especially if you are posting and you're sharing like you should. They're going to be intrigued by you. Um, what else? What else? What else? How many of you guys have like pages? Okay. Don't be afraid of your like page. Don't be thinking if you don't have a like page, you have to have one. I'm very much like that was a... And I, and I talk about this like this and I try to share it, um, a little nugget of it on every call I get on because I was one of those people that didn't want to have a like page and didn't want to post somewhere else. Like I was like, kill me now. Like I can't even keep up with my own like Instagram and Facebook. Like you want me to go get a like page? And I had no clue about boosting ads or any of that crap. And then, um, naturally it just kind of happens. And for, I think, a really long time, I was sharing crappy recipes and, like, the lamest stuff on my life page. And I was like, why isn't anybody liking my life page? Well, yeah. Um, so when you do start your life page, I want you to remember one thing. You don't have to have a like page to grow this business or build this business. Don't believe the hype. Um, if you want to go that route, be educated in that route because it can be very expensive. Danielle and I can attest to that. Um, but I will tell you that run your like page just like you run your personal page. Run your like page like it's your own reality show. Share who you are, what you're about. Don't hold back. Be um, steadfast in your shoes and forthcoming with your passion and who you are as a person. Because if you run your like page that way versus how I did it for a long time, like sharing recipes and like, Oh, try this or try that. Like that doesn't work. You have to just be you. And when you do that on your like page, good things will happen. Um, 
I share recipes now, but I also share more selfies. Like it's funny how a selfie can interject and change things up a little bit. I used to think that like, if you wanted to see my selfie, just come to my personal page. No, um, you don't have to build a, a, a Danielle McKean awesome organization from your like page. You don't need it. You guys, um, there's so many resources out there in your community and what you're doing on your personal page and Instagram and all the other things that are out there for people to grow their business. Don't think that that's something you have to do. I don't, I don't like it when coaches tell me they're pressured into it because it can be a little, um, a little bit of a bummer. Is that a good way to say it? <laughs> Sometimes your like page can be a, a buzzkill, but, um, does anybody have any questions or anything? I think I'm out. I don't know um, if I hit everything. I was trying to go back to my my list. Yeah, if you guys have a question, real quick uh, comment in the chat. Tips for Success Club. All right, so this is really easy for me, and I try to reiterate this all the time to my team. Just like I said, just keep being yourself. Be consistent. If you guys go to your Facebook page right now, this is, I just went through this with my team. If you go to your Facebook page right now and you're somebody who's looking to buy a challenge pack or wants to get in more information on coaching and you landed on Chelsea's page, right? 15 seconds, go through her page, the last five posts. What do you see? If you're not posting to where every time somebody comes to your page, they know what, who you are and what you're about, you're not gonna hit Success Club. I hate to say it, but your posting and what you put out on social media transpires and transcribes right into your Success Club points. Because being consistent and being that person that people trust will help you get your Success Club points. Not only that, but follow up. Um, I don't know, I'm gonna show you guys this because it's right here. So I use a calendar, this is my calendar, so fancy. I think I got it like the dollar rack at Target or something like that. Um, I literally track my business every single day. I don't track um, how many people invited, I don't track how many friends I put out there. I track who do I need to follow up with today? And if you guys did not listen today's, to today's national wake-up call, Jessica Bowser Nelson was amazing, and she talked about this. Um, tracking is everything, and you have to find – I think I'm at the point in the business where I know where my weaknesses are, and I track the weakness. Um, I don't worry about my strengths as much, but follow up. That person you spoke to three and a half months ago that told you no – she needs another message. Don't be afraid to go all the way down and scroll all the way down to the bottom of your messages in your messenger and send an invite out to all those people or just to, hey girl, what's going on? Don't be afraid. Those are my tips for Success Club because I, I have been there. It's been like, you know, pushing the end of the month and I'm like, I need 10 points. I need 10 points. And I had eight points. I sent out 30 messages, somebody will bite. Somebody will. You just have to go after it. And let me, um, one other quick thing. So I would be a Success Club All-Star SE10 legend. I would have had SE10 for 33 months in this business, but I accidentally canceled my Shakeology HD. And I shared this story before at some um, on stage. It is so important, you guys, to pay attention. Like, you can get wrapped up in um, getting your success club points, and you can get wrapped up on rank and all these other things, but remember that your business has to be on point all the time, and I messed up. I lost success club for two months that I didn't even know because I canceled, my credit card got canceled, and I didn't change the card, and I didn't even know about it. So remember to pay attention to you, don't lose sight of what's important, and that is you being the best you and you loving yourself and giving yourself everything that you need to help yourself grow because that is huge. And I lost that for a little bit. So I hope that this information was super yeah. helpful, you guys. Yes, thank you so much. You're so amazing. I have to add to a couple things you said. Consistency is so important. And on a lot of my one on one calls with my coaches, I go and I I'm looking at their timeline the entire time that we're talking and I'm just like scrolling their news feed, seeing, are they sharing a mix of five things they're passionate about with the opportunity, with challenges, with, you know, their family. 
and there's reasons why they're, they're struggling in certain areas. And it's by that timeline. So I encourage you guys to do what she said. And I also encourage that because it shares or shows a lot. So if you're not getting success club, are you being consistent with sharing your journey? Not just join my challenge, but maybe a personal touch behind that challenge post. Like I have struggled in the past and you know, I overcame it with Shakeology. Something personal that people can relate to. So a lot of times I don't see that, that personal, intimate touch that people can relate to. And then I not I don't see the, the opportunity. So a lot of times, you know, coaches are not sharing coaching. And they're wondering why no one's joining this team. They're wondering why no challengers are joining them. And it's because they're not being exposed to the coaching opportunity. So it's so vital to go and take an inventory of your timeline every single night. Um, another thing you said about the National Wake Up Call, I listened, it was awesome. Action in this business can change the world. And it's true that the little action that we do through helping people can really make an impact. Like, just think that as if you didn't become a coach, what impact would you have not made? And the same for me, like, you guys wouldn't be here. This whole thing that Becky and Christina created would not be here. So action, getting success club, recruiting coaches, doing everything that Carl Deichler laid out for us can really change the world. And then one more thing, I posted Carl Deichler's video that he shared on his timeline. It was amazing. It's just about health and fitness that you either want it or you don't. And I think that pertains to the business also. You either want it or you don't. So why are you not sharing coaching? Why are you not sharing your challenge and staying consistent? Like, do you guys want it? You're on the call, right? You want it, so you gotta be all in, in all areas that she said. But amazing job, Dara. Thank you so much. And I'm excited to speak on your call tomorrow night. So I'm gonna bring it, but thank you. Thank you again, you're so amazing. And I hope you guys have a wonderful night. Go blow it up on Dara's wall. She posted an amazing selfie before the call. She's like, ah, be herself. <laughs> you know how many times I took that picture? I was like, come on, come on. <laughs> I love it. It was super cute. So have a wonderful night, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.